Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make our down by the pond bracelet. This cute bracelet features Amazonite gemstone beads and has this cute little green girl button and leather enclosure. So let's take a look at the products and tools we'll need to make it. For this project, I will be using 5mm Silver Nugget Hishi Spacer Beads by Tiercast. I'm using the 10mm Amazonite Short Simple Cut Gemstone Beads. I have this adorable little 15 by 16 Pewter Small Fish Pond Button by Green Girl Studios. I have a 5 by 5mm 18 gauge Open Jump Ring. Then I've got two 8mm Sterling Silver Textured Round Closed Jump Rings. I've got 2x2 two two sterling silver crimp beads and crimp bead covers. I'm using the fine soft flex beading wire and then I have about 10 inches of the 1.5 millimeter natural antique brown round leather cord. For my tools I will be using chain nose pliers, wire cutters, and crimping pliers. You can find links to all these beads and supplies in the description below. So let's get started. Okay, so to begin our bracelet, I'm going to go ahead and take the open jump ring and I'm going to attach it to the shank of the button here and to one of the closed jump rings. So to open your jump ring, you want to take your chain nose pliers and grabbing on each side of the jump ring, you're going to pull one side towards you and one side away from you. Then you're going to thread on the shank of the button and then one closed jump ring. And then in the same fashion as you opened it, you bring it together and you close it. When you hear that nice snap, you know it's nice and secure. So now that we've got our button um, on there and got our jump rings, I'm going to attach my soft flex. So I already cut 10 inches of the fine soft flex. And to attach it, I'm going to pick up one crimp bead and I'm gonna go through the closed jump ring here on the button. And then you bring your soft flex back through the crimp bead. And you want to make sure that there's a little bit of slack here um, between your crimp bead and um, your jump ring. You don't want it to be too tight as it could snap if it's really super tight. So make sure there's a little bit of slack there. And then using your back notch first, you're going to crimp one time. And then I turn and flip it and I crimp two more times in the front notch. Sometimes you can just do one more time, but I always like to do two for good measure. So using that back notch first, bring your crimp bead in there. Leaving a little bit of slack, you crimp it one time, you turn and flip it to the front notch, and then you crimp it two more times. Just to make sure you get a nice and secure connection there. I always give it a little tug, make sure it's nice and tight. And then if it is, you go ahead and take your wire cutters and you're gonna cut off the tail from the soft flex there, making sure not to cut your working wire. And um, since I'm already at this end, I'm going to go ahead and just attach my crimp bead cover. And you're going to do that by inserting the crimp bead cover into this front notch first. And then you're going to gently close it over the crimp bead. So you just bring it over that crimp bead there. And then you gently close it. And it makes it look like just a cute little two millimeter bead there. I'm just going to give it a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now it's perfect. So as you can see, I'm going to use um, this bracelet as kind of my template for this design here. And so this bracelet is constructed using the simple cut gemstone nuggets and the little heishis here. And because of the gemstones, they're kind of um, irregular cut, you're going to have to make sure that you um, you can't really just go totally by the count. This has 12 beads in it. But say if your strand, if it has a little bit chunkier beads, you might only use like say 10 beads to still get in your like um, seven inches of beaded, a beaded strand there. So kind of just, you know, pull out your beads, but make sure you measure your, um, your working strand there so that you don't make your bracelet too long or too short. So first here, we're just going to start with um, a gemstone. So you string on one gemstone there and then one spacer and you grab another gemstone. And when I'm making these kind of bracelets, I always like to kind of try to um, change my gemstone from each one next to it. So that's like a little different shape just to make it a little bit more visually interesting to look at and stuff. But if you want your beads more to match, you could definitely go through and kind of pull out all the long beads versus the flat beads and stuff. So, so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep stringing this along here. 
make sure that I start go with one gemstone and one he sheet in between each. And it is approximately 12 beads long, but again, depending on how your gemstones are cut, it may be shorter or longer for bead count there. So I'm just gonna keep stringing along. And since how um, I already have this one bracelet made up here, I'm just kind of using it as like template to see how far along I am there. So it looks like I only need about like four more on there. So that should be just about right. Just a couple more. Just wanna make sure I'm not getting too long there. Yep, should be just perfect. All right, gonna add a couple more and then we're done with the stringing part of the bracelet. All right, so yeah, looks like we're just about there. So now on this end, I'm going to take one crimp bead a crimp cover and one closed jump ring. So I'm going to pick up the crimp bead and go through my closed jump ring here, bring my soft flex back through my crimp bead. I definitely want, on this one, I want to make sure that I've got enough room so my bracelet can really kind of relax and um, bend nicely. So I just give it a nice little bend to make sure it's not too tight on there. It's a little tight, so I'm just going to get a little bit more slack there. Okay. So now I'm ready to crimp on this side here. So in the same fashion that I did the front crimp, on the front part of the bracelet there, I'm going to go ahead and crimp one time in the back, and then I'm going to turn and flip it to the front and crimp one more time. Probably two more times here. There we go. Give it a little tug, cut off your tail thread or your tail wire there. And then I'm going to go ahead and just cover my crimp bead with a crimp cover in the same fashion as I did the front end of this bracelet. Just bring it over the crimp bead and then gently close it. All right, so my bracelet is almost done at this point. So now I am ready to go ahead and to do the little leather closure on this bracelet. And that is just constructed by taking about a 10 inch piece of leather. It needs to be long enough that you can um, go ahead and knot it. So you take that and you bring it, thread it through the end jump ring. You bring it to the center of your leather here. So it's even there on your ends. And you're just going to tie an overhand knot as close to that jump ring as possible. Bring both of your ends through there. Kind of push your knot down towards that, oops, towards that jump ring. There. And so to make the actual button closure here, you're gonna bring your two pieces of leather together. And then I always just um, push my button in between there. And that kind of gives me my measuring point. So then I just hold my finger on there and then I tie another overhand knot right at that spot. I just kind of hold my place there with my finger, bring that knot down. 
And then I have a little bit of extra here just because you need, you need it to be a little bit longer just so you can tie your overhand knots. So then I always just take my wire cutters and I kind of trim it at a little angle. Gives it a fun little look at the end there. And now I've got this cute little down by the pond bracelet. This is a great look for summer with the little leather and the gemstones and everything here. If I can get this guy closed on there. There we go. All right. You can find all the products and tools for this inspiration design at fusionbeads.com.